I picked up this trailer about a month ago. Unfortunately, I have no idea what the weight capacity is. I'm hoping to tear into one of these trailer axles tonight and get at least an idea of what the axles are rated for. Stick around for a while and hopefully we can get a rough idea of what this thing can carry. So the plan is to pull the tires off, remove the hubs, and measure the bearings inside the hubs. At that point, we can hopefully calculate at least what those hubs can carry, meaning we can figure out what each axle is rated for. So let's say each axle is 3,500 pounds. We'll take that times two for two axles and you got 7,000 pounds. Now, obviously your suspension would have to be rated for that much as well. Your hitch would have to be rated for that as well, which we've got a lunette ring up there. And even the crappiest lunette ring is 10 tons. So we're good on the front end. I'll quit talking and get to working. Get this cotter pin out of here. Didn't have to remove a cap because there was not one on this wheel, which is why I'm starting with this one first because I'm just going to assume the other wheel bearings are in decent shape. This one not having a cap on it, who knows what it's like. Get that pin out. That's coming off surprisingly well considering it's been exposed to the elements for who knows how long. There we go. That was pretty easy. Boy, those shoes actually look pretty dang good. I'll go get the calipers and we'll start measuring stuff. Now that I've got access to the spindle, I just need to measure the surfaces where the outer bearing and the inner bearing ride. And we can take those numbers and hopefully look them up online and get something figured out. So you can see this first one here is 1.062 inches. I'm gonna guess it's probably 1.0625, which would be an inch and a sixteenth. And then this one back here, yep, I moved it a little bit, but, but if you can see that, it's 1.375, which is an inch and three eighths. So now we'll go inside and um, try and find a hub that has a inch and a sixteenth and an inch and three eighths bearing, and hopefully that tells us how much weight this half of the axle can hold. So what I like to do is go to northerntool.com. Their website's pretty good for trying to figure out this kind of stuff. So my outer bearing is 1.0625, which is an inch and a sixteenth, right here. And the inner bearing is 1.375, which is an inch and three eighths. So this kit right here has both bearings we need. If you want to go and look at it, it'll even tell you what bearing it is. The uh, inner is an L. 68111, the outer is an L44610. I mean, there's a lot of good info here. All the seals that fit it, I mean, ev everything right here. And that whole bearing kit, it's only 22 bucks. But anyway, that's not the important part. So what I do is I start going through all the trailer hubs and I find the one that has those same bearings. Let's see this one here, inch and three eighths by one and sixteenth tapered. Weight capacity, 1750. And you'll notice that says each. So each hub is 1750. So we'll take 1750 times two, get 3,500 pounds, and we'll double that because it's a tandem axle. And that will give us a total capacity of 7,000 pounds. Now back to the trailer, probably weighing around 2,000, maybe a little bit more because it has a title. Subtract, we're just gonna say 2,000 from 7,000. That trailer can carry 5,000 pounds of weight. This whole process took me 20 minutes. I mean, the hardest part was taking the wheel and the hub off and measuring what the spindle size was. Once you have this info right here, the size that the spindle is where the bearings ride, you can figure out exactly what that thing can carry. I mean, more or less. I'm sure there is some variance in that, but every single bearing or every single hub that I found on their website that has these bearings is rated for 1750 now, if you remember, I was missing that dust cap. Well, I come down here, and it says it's a 1.98 inch dust cap. How easy is that? Also, it gives me the dimension for the dust seal on the back side. So I'll go ahead and order four dust seals, one dust cap, and probably just reuse all those bearings. The one that didn't have the cap looked fine, so I'm sure they're all okay. I'm not too concerned about it. At the beginning of this video, I told you there was a couple things to consider trying to figure out your load capacity. One was your hubs. 
I think I mentioned the suspension being able to handle the load. Obviously the frame. The thing's got to be sturdy enough. Whatever kind of coupler you got at front. But then also the tires. The tires have to be able to carry the weight. And this is a quick and easy way to kind of just guesstimate what you can haul. But if you look right here, it says single tire can haul 2,040 pounds. Take that times four, you got just over 8,000 pounds. So 7,000 pounds would have been a safe guess on this trailer, but obviously you don't want to just base on the tires because the tires are the easiest thing to change on this. I could take these off by the next load range up and think I can haul 10,000 pounds with this. My tires are 2,000 pounds a piece. My hubs are 1,350 a piece. So overall, this thing can haul at least 7,000 pounds. The hitch up front is well over that. I crawled underneath, the framework is all nice and straight and sturdy, everything's tight, other than the suspension. The suspension is pretty rough. I'll make another video replacing all of that. But after all that work's done, I'll have absolutely no qualms hauling 7,000 pounds on this. Well, 5,000 pounds, because I'm just gonna assume the trailer weighs about 2,000. If this was helpful, guys, please comment down below. If you think I'm totally insane, comment that down below too. This is how I've always done it when I didn't know. It's, it gets you in the ballpark at least. It's better than just looking at a trailer and going, yep, that baby can haul and spit out a number. I appreciate the view, guys. Stick around for the next one, and I'll see you then.